Hello, this is Leisha Holmes of Key Recruitment, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined today by Anoush Kamond of Ollis Office Collective. That was a real tongue twister there. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Well, How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much indeed. And as we record this, we've just had our new restrictive measures brought in by Boris Johnson. So first and foremost, how are you feeling about everything today? Um, I'm not going to lie. It's obviously a, a little bit of a disappointment that I feel like we've, we've taken a few steps forward and now we're going back a little bit. But you know, we've got to be realistic. We are all in this together. So we've just got to pick ourselves up and carry on. We do indeed. And I think that's one thing that we've, you know, as we've got to know each other over the last few months, I think there's so much collaboration out there. And I think people are really keen to support one another. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you today, because I think you've got a really interesting background. So would you like to start at the beginning and tell us a little bit about your early career? Because you weren't always in recruitment. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So yeah, my background's a little bit unique. Um, so I actually was an actor or actress, um, got to be politically correct how you say that, um, for about 15 years. Um, so I worked in TV, film, lived in uh, Los Angeles, New York, and obviously back in London. And um, yeah, I, I, was, I was a jobbing actress, if you want to ter make the term correct. And, um, you know, I had some successes and um, lived and breathed that life. But when I turned 30, I got to a point where you know, I had to make a decision. Was I going to continue down that path where one month you're in work, one month you're not in work? And um, I thought, you know what? I need more stability in my life. Things are changing. Um, friends are buying houses, getting mortgages. So um, I made the decision to, you know, walk away from that, which wasn't easy. And um, I ended up, fell into recruitment. I don't think anyone ever plans to go into recruitment. Um, you kind of fall into it. And, All um, the best people fall into it. So come and talk, talk through, are there any sort of, sort of major highlights from your acting career that you're able to share with us? Highlights? It's so funny, you know, because I really rarely talk about it anymore. It genuinely feels like a completely different life. Um, yeah, I, I did, you know, I think my biggest achievement, I did a big film. Um, it was called Ill Manners. Um, it was written and directed by the, the English rapper Plan B. Um, wow. And I played... Yeah, I played the, one of the leads in that. So, um, you know, we had a Leicester Square premiere, red carpet. So wow, that's, it. that's my only kind of claim to fame almost. But that was probably the biggest highlight. Oh, that's wonderful. And I imagine that having such great acting skills, I mean, I only did Amdram at school, but I think it gives you a certain persona, which I'm sure you'll come on to talk about, might lend itself quite well in recruitment sometimes. If you may be pitching for business, having to sort of elevate yeah, that I pitch. Absolutely. I mean, my phone's ringing, excuse me. Always the way. That's okay. Sorry. Real life? Sorry. I'm it's okay. We don't mind. We're all recruiters on no, here. I'm, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know how to turn it off from my, um, from my computer. Um, oh, yeah, I d it definitely helps in terms of networking and, you know, building relationships because, you know, with acting, that you're constantly playing different characters, meeting and networking with new people. So it, those skills definitely translated over, um, especially, you know, when meeting with candidates, learning about their stories and also knocking on doors um, to try and win new business with new clients. Definitely. I mean, one of the things when you when you are casting any character as an actor is that you're telling a story. And that's actually what we do in recruitment, isn't it? When you're pitching a client to a can potential candidate, you're not necessarily reading off a script. You are remote recalling information. So I imagine yeah. it's, it's giving you some amazing skills. So, so go on, you fell into recruitment. So how did that happen? So when I was acting, I think I mentioned that, you know, I, I was working one month on, one month off. So I did lots of different jobs on the side. Um, I've done it all. I was an L technician. I was a waitress. I worked doors of clubs. And I also did a lot of camping work as, a, as PA work, sorry, at the half in the background. <laughs> um, and because of my PA work, you know, I was very familiar with lots of different recruitment agencies because, you know, I worked with um, on camping bookings and also perm bookings. So when I made the decision to, tramp, you know, find a real job, so to speak, I went and registered with various agencies. And one of them said, we actually want you to come and work for us. Um, wow. How do you feel about that? Um, and I knew <clears throat> absolutely nothing about recruitment. Um, and I thought, you know what? Okay. Give it a go. Give it a go and see what happens. And that, that kind of was a story. And um, <clears throat> very grateful for them believing in me and seeing something and giving me that opportunity. Yeah. 
well you've got people skills at the end of the day and I think also <laughs> the fact that you have lived abroad and you've obviously had to be adaptable you've done a month here a month there these are all sort of really intangible things that actually if you just sat there and been taught that in a theoretical environment you'd have probably thought that's a bit crazy but it's given you so many attributes that have made you probably really quite creative as a recruiter I would have thought absolutely look I am such I'm so sorry <clears throat> That's okay. It's not going well for me today. Um, I'm such, <laughs> a big, such a big advocate for transferable skills. You know, mm, not everybody had the luxury to go to university. You know, get you know Ivy League education. And for me, it's all about life experience. And I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't done all of these different things. And it Great. makes you who you are. Yeah. So you know, with recruitment, half of it is about you know reading people, learning about their experiences, what makes them them what makes them tick so for me having you know traveled and lived in different countries mm. it definitely helped me you know to kind of think outside the box and look at look at how you know people react in different situations and really learn about their story and what they're looking for going forward but that's proper recruitment and I think what's interesting is that we've obviously had a really good chat before <laughs> we came on to record and um I like the fact that what the, the when the audience listen to this they will have a candidate on their books right now and a client on their books right now where they think okay you might not have this sort of granular detail of having done xyz but you just know as the recruiter that the two match for exactly. I, I like to call it my curve balls and i think there's there's never been a greater time to emphasize why transferable skills are more important you know we've we've, we've got the most you know the biggest tsunami of, of candidates on the market over the last six months and, and that's going to now continue especially with sectors like hospitality travel leisure and, and music industry yeah. that's inevitable so what advice having done that yourself if you were to go back and look at the the actor and then the recruiter that transition mm -hmm. What advice would you give for someone that's maybe looking at totally switching a career of how you convey those transferable skills? So, for example, for in recruitment, yeah, people talk about selling and they talk about time management and you talk about being persuasive. So how how would you sort of get how would you communicate that and make yourself stand out as a candidate? I think our job as a recruiter, you know, when we're meeting candidates, it, we're, we're there to kind of work out what's not written on the CV, you know, what's hidden behind those lines. And if we have a good relationship with our clients and we meet a candidate that on paper they maybe wouldn't want to see, but we know 100 million percent that they would get on with them and that everything that they're looking for, it's my job to try and get that candidate in the door. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nine times out of 10, it does work. Um, I think for somebody that's coming from, you know, a completely different background, wanting to transition into something else, they really need to highlight those transferable skills on their CV. So I often, you know, I'll get inundated with CVs of somebody that, you know, for the last 10 years has worked in hospitality as a general manager, but they're then applying for, you know, an office manager role in a finance firm. There's no reason why they couldn't do the role if they've got the right skill set, mm. but they need to highlight these points on their CV. Yeah. They don't just, you don't just send a CV because, you know, all we're going to read is, oh, general manager. Yeah. Write a cover letter. Explain why you think you're right for this role. Why, why would the client be interested to meet you? And that way, you know, you're always already 10 steps ahead. Um, I've got a very good friend of mine, actually. She spent 15 years working as in insolvency, as an insolvency practitioner. She wanted out. She wanted to go into an office manager role. And she literally had her, had her CV. And the first paragraph was literally reasons why she thinks she's right for that role. And all of her skill sets were aligned. And she ended up working now as an office manager in an accountancy practice. You know, th there's ways, but it's yeah, how definitely. she presented herself. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, often, I mean, that's been the case in recruitment. You know, if you're a recruiter that's in a market, for example, retail, which has been shrinking, um, there are other sectors that will probably inevitably do the same. And you're looking at sectors that have got more growth potential. Think about your CV, your LinkedIn profile, your application, not from your perspective, but from the person reading it and the person that's going to be reviewing you. Absolutely. And that's another thing that you've just mentioned with LinkedIn. I'll often receive CVs, you know, I'll read through the profile and then I'll go onto the LinkedIn profile and it doesn't match, mm. you know, either it's not updated or their titles are different. You've, you've got to be clever. You've yeah, got to be okay. 10 steps ahead. If you're, if you're focusing on wanting to become a personal assistant and you don't have that experience, be clever, 
stand out from the crowd yeah, and, and write those reasons why and update your LinkedIn. I, I can't say how, how many times I've gone on someone's profile and they've not updated it for three, four years. Yeah, no, definitely. And also, you know, just while people are sort of bearing that in mind, potential employers and recruiters will go and check out your Facebook and your Instagram as well. So ensure Absolutely. that everything matches. You know, if you, you say that you've been off with stress, but then you've seen that you've been a holiday or whatever, just, you know, there's got to be consistency with what you're doing. And I think it's really interesting. So talk to us a little bit about your business then. So Office Collective, um, what's, your, yeah. what's the reason you set the business up? And then talk a little bit about what, what you've done to ensure that you've, you're adaptable for your clients right now. So I set up the business. I was actually originally called um, The Office Club. And um, I set it up with my then business partner, who's also one of my best friends. Um, we did it together for a year and a half. And the whole premise behind the business was we wanted to set up something that was boutique, personal, hands-on. You know, we really wanted to focus on developing those really strong, nurturing relationships with our clients, which I mm. sometimes think with the larger, you know, recruitment agencies, you're not able to do that because mm. you're often getting passed from pillar to post. So I wanted to set up something that, you know, really focused on, you know, emotional intelligence and having that, you know, hands-on tailored approach for our clients. Um, we did it for a year and a half together. It was very successful. Um, we decided to actually amicably split the business 50-50. Um, we, we just wanted different things for the long term. Yeah. So I then ended up relaunching as Office Collective and, um, we focus across every industry, so that makes us quite unique, but we focus predominantly within office support, HR, finance, and operations. So essentially the backbone of the yeah. office. And for me, it's all about relationships. You know, my clients, they can call me whenever they want. They can ask as many questions as they want. Nothing's off the table. And it's just a really hands-on, slick, bespoke, personalized service. And I think that from, obviously I'm a recruiter of recruiters, so I can sort of talk about this from a, an objective point of view, but I think that your nicheness, although it's across all different sectors, that's, that's how we class ourselves as well. I think that will be your differentiator for a lot of businesses that you're almost there outsource, aren't you? You're going to find the, the best person for them and you'll just know because you, you might have a, you know, a, a marketing or a, a business support person coming from, you know, logistics, but actually they'd be really good in, a production company or something like that. So I think it, that's Absolutely. really interesting. So you've, you I won't have worked through a, down, a downturn before no, as a business never. owner. So, <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're still in it. We're, we're, not, at, we're not through it we yet. So how, how have you, um, how have you, A, prepared yourself for it and B, how are you coping with it as a business owner? I think, in all honesty, I was a little bit naive in the beginning. Um, you know, we, we knew at the time what was going on in China, but I don't think anyone really envisaged that this was actually going to come over here and no. the country was going to go into complete lockdown. So was I prepared? Not probably in the way that I should have been. Um, mm. Definitely a learning curve. But what did I do? You know, I just adapted. I had to do what everybody else was doing. This, is, this was the situation. We're in unprecedented times you just got to carry on going. And, yeah. you know, truthfully, I'd say for the first few months, March to April, May time, it was very, very quiet. Mm. So for me, it was a time to really connect with all of my candidates, you know, mm. let, what's going on with you? Redundancies were happening. People are on furlough. Everybody was scared. So it was about having honest and frank conversations yeah. with them, helping people with their CVs, you know, Right. showing them you know why I think perhaps they've not had luck in the past and yeah. what we could do to improve that yeah and um, keeping constant line of communications with all of our clients you know mm -hmm. checking in how are you doing you know what's going on with your business how have you been affected you know just being the being human real, it's being the honest, human factor you know, taking the recruitment part out of the equation out of it. yeah and um you know following their journeys and some sectors are actually thriving right now, surprisingly, and others have been really, really affected. So you've mm. just got to kind of be adaptable. Yeah, um, we, we are fortunate. We, we do have work coming in right now. But, you know, it wasn't what it was like pre-pandemic. And we're just being adaptable. We're making sure that we can deliver 100% on the roles that we do have. Good. And we're, we're trying to be, you know, there for candidates that just need to have a chat, yeah. open air, you know, help them what, what what can we do be support honest with them, them. they listen yeah. support them you know we might not mm. have something for you right now but please keep checking in 
you know, we've got your details on file. If anything comes in that I think matches what you're looking for, 100% will be in touch. And, mm. you know, with the team as well, um, constant communication, you know, on video chats, 24-7 with them, on WhatsApp, you know, what's going on with you at home? Do you have children? You know, how can I help you? How can yeah. I support you? Definitely. So it's just been a lot of that, to be honest with you. Good. And, um, and, look, and as we enter this sort of next phase, which, you know, how many phases will there be? We don't know. But as we kind of, we're on the brink of phase two, I guess, what, what are you doing to ensure your own mental well-being and positive mindset? For me, look, I'm very lucky. You probably can't see him. Maybe you can. He's on the sofa. Hang on. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's, oh. there, there's, there's the back of him. Sorry. He's so well behaved. Um, my goodness. Although mine's fast asleep as well. He's not moved. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my dog has been my lifesaver. And I know maybe that sounds a little cheesy, but not at all. just being, being having, having that unconditional love. And mm. no matter what, I'd have to go out for walks in the park masked up you know staying away from people mm -hmm. being out in the open in the open air outdoors has really really helped me Good. and additionally you know I love to cook I know you do too yes um, I do. <laughs> eat, eat, eating good food really looking after myself and I, mm. I made a promise I was going to constantly do a lot of exercise during lockdown because that's crucial for healthy body healthy mind agreed and um you know, just staying in touch with friends, family, you know, we are all doing it do, in this together mm. and doing the same thing. Yeah, we um, are. Watch, watching also a lot of TED Talks. I can't mm. highlight enough with the TED Talks. For me, you know, it's like a little bit of pick-me-up medicine, especially when you watch a really right. good one. Do you, do you listen to them on podcast? You can do like the five-minute TED Talk daily. I don't know if you've downloaded that to podcast. That's, they're, they're just brilliant. Mm. they're amazing Especially for dog walks like, <laughs> yeah exactly or literally if you're waiting in line somewhere to pick something up mm. um i tend to after work I'll, I'll watch a few videos as well because for me when i'm when i'm watching people and feeling the emotion that's when mm. i'm like wow i'm ready Bring on are you are day. you that strange woman walking around going yes yes because that's me walking the dog and people think i'm this really strange person i've got usually got my airpods in as opposed to these going yes that's right like agreeing with the person that stood on stage talking about something I've definitely been there, definitely, you know, had strange looks in the park for sure. Um, I think more so if I'm listening to music, I just start singing and I can't sing. So, um, you know, I don't mind, you know, you've got to laugh like no one's watching, cry like no one's watching. And I'm a big believer, just live your life and don't care what people think. I love that. That's a perfect way to finish this. Anushka, you've been amazing as a guest and it was very nice to meet you, your dog. And um, you, you keep I doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank really appreciate you. it. Nice to see you. Take you care. too. Bye. Bye.